Hi and welcome back for your final video tutorial on refining the model. Now that you're familiar with viewing the results from the previous module, we can begin the last part of this course where we will be refining the model by exploring the use of optimization in ANSYS. We will start by going over the different optimization techniques, preparing our model, defining the parameters and how to use the parameter workspace, and then we will use direct optimization to help us refine the model. Finally, we will conclude by going over what we've learned in the course and how it can help you in your future projects. So let's get started. So when we talk about optimization techniques in ANSYS, we can divide them into three main categories. The first would be a manual optimization process, which is you would modify a parameter such as a dimension and then solve the model and then verify the output such as the stress to check and see if it's better or worse than your previous solution. If not, then you would repeat these steps, change a parameter, solve, verify, etc., which can be very time consuming. Now, the second one is called parametric optimization, or on the other hand, it's basically an automation of the manual process. So instead of manually going in and checking each parameter and solving it, you can have a program that goes in and changes the model for you. The third type of optimization is called Smart Shape, which uses an adjoint solver, which basically runs a topology optimization. To give an example, let's say you have a triangle and you want to optimize the length of one side of the triangle. Well, in this case, it won't change the length of the triangle, but will actually change the shape of the triangle. So this is called the Smart Shape optimization. But for today, we're going to address the second one, which is parametric optimization. So, for example, let's say we want to optimize the diameter of the lifting lug's hole. We can tell ANSYS to go through, say, 10 different diameter sizes and generate the safety factor outputs for each one. But of course, as we can see in this example, the smaller the diameter, the larger the safety factor will be. So, what we can do is use another parameter, say, the mass of the object, and we use that as another constraint in order to find the best diameter while at the same time keeping the mass at a reasonable level. Now most optimization techniques can be very computationally expensive meaning that we need a lot of computer power in order to solve these problems quickly. The complexity of our model as it is now is very high with the use of contacts, multiple bodies and loading steps. So in order for the following calculations to be completed relatively quickly on your computer we will need to simplify our model. So let's jump back into Workbench from where we left off in our last tutorial in order to prepare our geometry for the optimization process. Two ways you can do this. You can go into the Geometry tab here and you can suppress bodies by right clicking and clicking on Suppress Body or you can also suppress or delete the body in Design Modeler. But we're going to suppress the bodies here because it's a bit quicker. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the base, right click on it, and then click on Suppress Body. Then it says that this will change the geometry and will clear our solution files that are generated. So we're going to click on Yes to continue. And now you can see that the base has been removed. Now what we're going to do is click on Bolt 1, hold Shift, and click on the last one here and select all four of the bolts, right click and click on suppress body. So now as you can see, all we have is the lifting lug left. Next up, we're going to want to remove all the connections that we've made. As you can see here that the contacts have already been suppressed automatically because ANSYS detects that these components are not there anymore, therefore there are no more connections to be made. So we can actually leave this as is or we can go right click on contacts and delete all the contacts and then click on yes. Next, we're going to go into the mesh and we're going to change the mesh here. Let's clear all of this right now. Click on this and delete and then click on yes. Next, we're going to insert a method and we're going to select the geometry here from no selection. Click using the body filter on this body. Click on apply and we're going to change the method from automatic to multi-zone. Now, multi-zone will help reduce the number of elements. So let's go ahead and generate this mesh and see what it gives us. So there we have our multi-zone mesh, but now as you can see again, it's a little bit too coarse. So we're going to go ahead and insert a sizing, and we're going to choose the body again, click on apply, and we're going to change the element size to 5 millimeters. Let's go ahead, right click on mesh, and regenerate this mesh. There, that's much better now. Next up, let's move to static structural. Now as you can see here, there's a question mark next to it, which means that some of these properties have to be defined. 
And the reason is, is because we've deleted the base in this case. So now it says we don't know where the base is anymore and you still have a fixed support. So we need to either delete this or select a new geometry face for the fixed support. So let's do that by clicking on here the no selection and we're going to use the face filter and we're going to select this bottom face as the base. Then we're going to click on apply. Now as you can see the fixed support is now fully defined with the green check mark. Now the same thing goes for the bolt pretension. There is no more bolts anymore so we're going to select all of these four bolts, right click and we're going to delete the bolt pretensions. So now all we have left is our fixed support here at the bottom and if we look up here we have our bearing load. Now the last step is to change the analysis settings from a two step to a one step problem. So we're going to go into here and we're going to choose the number of steps and we're going to change that to one and then click on enter. Next up let's head into the solution branch and we can see here we have a few more question marks such as the equivalent stress convergence. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that and we're going to keep equivalent stress 4 which is on this face over here and then the bolt pretension which doesn't exist anymore so we can go right click on it and delete that as well and we'll delete this object and now we're pretty much done simplifying our model. Next let's just check each one of these equivalent stresses because here we have a display time of 2 which means at time step 2 so we need to make sure that we change this to the last time step so you can either enter 1 or you could enter 0 for the default and that'll put the last time step. So we want to make sure that all of these are set to last because we only have one step now. So we're going to change this one to 0 which would be last and for our stress tool I'm just going to make sure that that's all one second or last and that's fine. So now that we've gone through that let's go back to the bearing load and actually you can see in this table here that the force was applied at step 2 which doesn't exist anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy these values and put them at step 1. And step 3 here we could just go and delete that row. And so now we have at time 1 or step 1 we have our force being applied. Now that we have all that done let's go and right click on solution and solve our problem. So now that it's done we can click on equivalent stress and we can see our deformation here which is about 34 megapascals and it's located this time in the ring of the lifting lug and we can check our safety factors which we have 7.2 as a minimum here and the other ones which are actually all the same which were supposed to show different elements or different geometries so we can actually go and delete these and we have our force reaction which is here in the table and we have our structural error etc. So now that we have our solution solved, our base solution of 34 megapascals, let's begin by adding some parameters or creating a parameter set for this problem. So the two input parameters that we're going to want to change are going to be the diameter of the lifting lug hole and the thickness of this side of the lifting lug. So in order to parameterize these two dimensions, we need to go back into Design Modeler and create a parameter for these values. So let me show you how to do that right now. Let's minimize mechanical. And let's open up Design Modeler by double clicking on the third cell Geometry. Now as you can see here in Geometry Modeler, we still have all our bodies here, but in Mechanical they are suppressed. So the only ones that concern us are the diameter here and the width of this side of the lifting lug over here. So let's go and find that right now. So if we click on Extrude 5, we can see that this extrude is the 100 millimeters of this length over here. So in order to parameterize that, we can click on this box over here and then you can see that we can now create a new parameter name for this extrude. So we're going to leave this as the default called extrude5fd1 or you can rename this to whatever name you want as a parameter and we're going to click on OK. So we've now defined our first parameter. The next parameter we want to define is the diameter of the lifting lug hole which is under the sketch 9 over here. And we can see here that the diameter that we created here was D2 of 40 millimeters. So once again, we can click on this box over here and we can now create a new parameter and we can leave this as plane 6 diameter 2. And let's click on OK. Now we have two parameters defined in Design Modeler. So let's go and close this out. And now you will notice a new object here called Parameter Set. Now if we double click on Parameter Set, you can see that we've defined now two input parameters. The first one called parameter 1 which is the extrude depth of 100 millimeters and the second parameter which is the diameter of 40 millimeters. Now we currently don't have any output parameters so let's go and generate those right now. 
So let's go back into the project tab and let's jump back into mechanical by double clicking on the results. Now the two output parameters that will concern us are going to be the mass of this lifting lug as well as the safety factor. So let's go and find the mass which is going to be in the geometry of the lifting lug and we can go into properties and we can see here now that we have the mass of the lifting lug which is 1.69 kilograms. So once again we can click on this over here to parameterize it and now the mass is going to be an output parameter of our project. The next parameter is the safety factor so let's go into the stress tool click on safety factor and what we're going to do is we're going to once again parameterize the results for the minimum safety factor by clicking on this box over here. Now if we go back into workbench we will now see another arrow here which shows that the output parameters have now been defined. So if you click on the parameter set tab over here we can see that we have two input parameters and now we've just added parameter 3 and parameter 4 for the lifting lug mass and the minimum safety factor. So now that we've completed defining the parameter set and preparing our model, we're now going to use the direct optimization tool in ANSYS in order to optimize the model. We're going to go into the toolbox here and we can see under design exploration we have an object called direct optimization. So let's go and bring in direct optimization and create a standalone system right over here. We can now see that the direct optimization has now been linked to our parameter set and it's asking us to name this and we can just leave this as direct optimization as the default. Now we can see there's a question mark which means that there are some parameters that we have to define. So let's double click on optimization to open up the optimization window. So next up we have the objectives and constraints cell. So as mentioned before we want to minimize the mass of the lug while achieving a high factor of safety. So we can easily predict that increasing the thickness would reduce the stress and thus increase the safety factor, but it becomes more complicated when more inputs and outputs are added. So this is where we can set up those constraints and let ANSYS solver find the best result. So here we can add a parameter in the table value of our inputs and our outputs. So let's here choose the safety factor minimum and let's also select the lifting lug mass. Now you can see here on the left it created cell 4 and 5 which are the two objectives that we're going to set up. So as you can see here we have our parameter and under column C we have the objective. Now here it says no objective so what we can do is select this and we can say that we want to maximize the factor of safety minimum. And for the lifting lug mass we can click on no objective and say that we want to minimize the mass. Now here on the right you can add a constraint if you want, such as if you want the values of the safety factor to be within a certain bound, you can choose let's say values less than upper bound and you can choose an upper bound for the safety factor. But in this case we don't want any constraints so we're going to choose no constraint. Now that we've added these two maximize and minimize objectives, we can see now that under optimization we have a lightning bolt which means that ANSYS is ready to update. But before we continue with that, let's go ahead into the optimization tab here. Now we can see that the default optimization method is called screening. And in order to see the details of that we can look over to the table here under cell 5 and we can see that the screening method is used as a simple approach based on sampling and sorting. And this is the method we're going to use for our analysis. However, you can also change this method and use, let's say, a MOGA analysis or an adaptive multi-objective analysis. And to figure out what those do, you can click on it and then you'll see another description here in order to get more detail on this type of method. So let's go back to the screening method and change the number of sample points from 100 to 10. Now the reason for this is because 100 will take a long time to calculate on our computer and generating 10 sample points will be good enough for us. And for candidate points we're going to leave that as 3 and I'll talk to you a little bit about that once it's solved. Now finally we can go into our domain and here we can select the lower bound and upper bound for our parameters P1 and P2 which are the diameter and the thickness. So in this case, for the thickness, we're going to change the lower bound to 80 and we're going to change the upper bound to 120 millimeters. And for the diameter, we're going to change the lower bound to 30 and the upper bound to 50. Now as you can see below it, we have something called parameter relationships where let's say you wanted to create a relationship between the input and output. Let's say I want the thickness to be equal to two times the diameter. Well, you can create an expression here and make your own relationship between these two values to add another type of constraint. 
Now moving on under the parameter P1 and P2 here, we can see now that the lower bounds and upper bounds have been defined and the parameter relationships, we're going to leave that empty for now. And now we're ready to solve for the results. So we can go ahead and click on update and then ANSYS will automatically populate 10 sample points for us. So now that we've clicked on update, we can see that ANSYS is currently working and is busy. And we can see that it automatically created these 10 sample points for us over here. We can see that the extrude depth is between 80 and 120, and the diameter is between 30 and 50. Now as for the results of the columns D and E for the lifting lug mass and the safety factor, these are going to be automatically calculated as we speak. So I'm just going to skip forward because this takes a little bit of time to solve. Okay, so there it's done, and now we can see, let's move this table down a little bit. Now we can see here our three candidate points. So these candidate points are essentially the top three best points that ANSYS has chosen for us out of the 10 samples that were created. So ANSYS uses these stars and X's here to tell us how good the point is relative to the other sample points. So as we can see here, the candidate point one might be the best point with a lifting lug mass of 1.68 kilograms and a safety factor of 7.09 and we have a candidate point 2 and a candidate point 3 and here you can see the inputs that were chosen in order to get these results. So now we can head over into the maximize and now here we have a chart of all the points and the safety factor results. So for each candidate point we have for let's say the safety factor we have our results and for the lifting lug mass we have our results for each point. And if we scroll down here, we have our thickness with the number of points, and we have how our diameter varied with the number of candidate points. And then here is the raw data that we have for all the results. So this, again, you can select this, and you can export this into Excel. So you can right-click and export this data, and you can put this into Excel and do your own charts with it. And now here we have the results. So here under the results, we have the first thing called candidate points. So here we have again the three candidate points, one, two, and three. We have the input values, and we have the parameter values, and we have the variation from the reference value, which was the first candidate point that was generated for both the safety factor and the lifting lug mass. Now at the bottom, you have a more graphical representation of these three candidate points. And as you can see here, you have the parameters at the bottom, and then you have the values at the top. So let's say we look at candidate point one, so we can see that with the parameter 1 being 118 and the diameter being 2, we have our outputs here, P3 and P4, which are a mass of 1.68 kilograms and a safety factor of about 7. So here you can kind of get a graphical representation of this. And as you mouse over, you can see the values on the left here and the properties change as well. So you can actually read those values out there as well. Now let's just move this over a bit to get some space here. And you can actually change, let's say, the coloring method by candidate type to source type. Now let's just scroll up here a little bit. So here you can show the parameter relationships if we had any, but we don't. Here you can display the parameter full name. So here we can have the full name on the chart here. We can also show all the sample points. So now here we'll plot all the different sample points that were excluded from this chart. And here you can choose to show the candidate points or hide the candidate points. And here, you, once again, you can choose to enable or disable different parameters. Next off, we have the trade-off results. So if we click on here, we can see different types of graphs in order to get better insight for our results. So here on the axes, by default, we have the lifting lug mass versus the safety factor. So here we have all the candidate points. And then here we have the safety factor minimum. And let's say you wanted to change that, let's say, from the what's the relationship between the diameter and the safety factor, where you can plot that graph as well. Now, you can also change this to a 3D mode by choosing from 2D to 3D. And now you have a 3D plot of your results. And because of that, we can add a third axis, which is the Z axis. So let's say, how does the diameter affect the safety factor? and how does it affect the mass at the same time. And now here you can have a 3D chart of that. So let's bring this back into 2D. Now we can click on the samples results, which shows us all the samples, which is similar to the candidate points. However, here you have more control over the, the mode of the chart and the coloring methods. And then here we have the sensitivities result, which shows the sensitivity of the input and output parameters. So we can see here in the chart, that the lifting lug mass is very sensitive to diameter D2 and not so sensitive to the extrude thickness FD1. 
Now we can also change the mode for this. Instead of using a bar chart, we can choose a pie chart. And we can also choose to, let's say, exclude certain parameters by selecting these checkboxes over here or deselecting them. So now let's head back over to candidate points and let's have a look at them again. So as you can see here, let's move this back over a little bit. So let's look at these candidate points again. So now we can see we have candidate point one, two, and three. Now let's say we want to choose candidate point one and apply these inputs to our geometry. We can right click on candidate point one and click on insert as a design point. So let's click on that right now. So now that we've set it as design point, let's go back to the parameter set tab. Now we can see here we have DP1, which is our new design point that we've just selected. So now let's go ahead and update all the design points once again. Once that's done, we can see here now the DP0 design point 0 is currently the current design point. So that's actually what the geometry is set to right now, which is what we created in our previous modules. So we can see here that the depth is 100 millimeters and the diameter was 4. And from our candidate point, we now chose the depth to be 118 and our diameter to be 42.25. And we can also scroll to the right over here and we can see here that we have the lifting lug mass shown and the difference in safety factor shown as well. So we can also see in the notes it's been created from the optimization or candidate point one. Now in order to set this as the current, we can right click on the design point one and we can click on copy inputs to current. So by clicking on this, we will now set our model to use these design points for a model. So we can see here now that the current is now 118 and 42.25. So let's go ahead and update all the design points once again in order to update our model. Now once that's done, let's go back into the project tab and let's go and open up the design modeler to see what's changed. Now if we go into design modeler and click on extrude 5, we will now see that it's been modified to 118 millimeters for the extrude depth and that the diameter is now set to 42.25. And we can see that over here that it's been slightly enlarged and this over here has been slightly shortened from the previous solution. So let's close that out and now let's open the results by double clicking on the result cell. And now here we can see our equivalent stress results and our factor of safety results with our new optimized design. So now the mass of this has been slightly reduced. So if we go into the lifting lug, we can see under the properties that the mass has been slightly reduced and that our model is now optimized. So that will be as far as we go into parametric modeling in ANSYS. Now there are many other great features that exist, but we'll leave those for another course. So it's now time to conclude what we have learned. We started off with a real world problem. We wanted to design a lifting lug so that it would meet minimum safety factor requirements while saving on material cost. In order to do that, we started by defining what elements of the physical lug we would use for our computer CAD model. And once that was completed, we were able to create the 3D model in Design Modeler and then apply the loading and boundary conditions to the model. We then ran the ANSYS solver and explored many different results that included the stress, deformation and safety factor results. With those results we were then better positioned to ensure the design safety of the part and determined when it would fail. Finally we went through the parametric optimization tools within ANSYS in order to save on material cost while keeping a high safety factor. With all of the tools and concepts covered in this course you are now ready to tackle your own engineering problems and create great solutions by using ANSYS. Thanks for watching.